We're getting closer and closer to the Culture Proof Conference 2024, and we could not be more excited. Yes, it's a great time for the whole family, a great time of ministry, mothers, fathers, uncles, aunts, grandparents, <laughs> everybody, the kids. We have uh, something for them as well. Of course, we have the Culture Proof Kids, Culture Proof Teens. They're going to have some great speakers. It's going to be led by our Maria Hamilton, the third, the third. <laughs> and also Mark and Amy Warren. And so, That's right. man, the kids are going to be equipped and you can have some great discussions and conversations with them as you head back home. We are so excited. This year's conference is hosted by Faith Baptist Church in Bartlett, Tennessee. When registration opens, you will be among the first to know. If you go to cultureproof.net, make sure you join our email list because we are going to blast out open registration yes. to that list first. If you are a part of that email list, you will be among the first to register. And um, rumor has it that there's a special treat in involved for those who register early. So stay wow. connected, cultureproof.net, cultureproof.net. We're super excited about our guests who are all joining to talk about one thing, mm. resisting the cultural resisting trends it. that yes. rival the truth. Yes. We're going to be talking about the ways that we can remain culture-proof from mm -hmm. scientific apologetics, biblical apologetics, cultural apologetics. Yes. How do we live in this world as faithful followers of Christ? We're going to target every age group, so make sure you show up and bring your entire family. Yes, we're going to have a great lineup of speakers, which you'll be able to view their bios on the website, cultureproof.net. Once you go on, Abraham Hamilton III, Miki Addison. We're going to have Dr. Jason Lau, Dr. Kathy Cook, and others. It's going Dr. To be great. Renton Rathbun, Dr. Lee Brand. We are super excited. Dr. Taryn Dames. Mm -hmm. I feel like by next conference, I'm going to also have my doctorate just because <laughs> it kind of flows. Anyway, hey. we're super excited about what the Lord is doing, and we want you to join us. The Culture Proof Conference has happening July 18th through the 20th at Faith Baptist Church in Bartlett, Tennessee. Stay connected because more information about that is rolling out just around the corner. You're going to find that at cultureproof.net, cultureproof.net. Make sure you join the email list. We can't wait. Thanks for listening to Culture Proof. I'm Miki. And I'm Will. And today we are reminding you that you, all caps, you will be hated by all because of the name of Jesus Christ. What, mm. ha what happens often is that we tend to think that, um, you know, you're going to be hated. It's everybody else. And it's going to be only the extreme people because those are going to be the people who are misunderstood. And so that's why they're going to be hated because people just don't get, you know, what Christianity is all about. They don't understand. What we fail to recognize is that people will understand fully. People will get it. People will um, still hate you. Hmm. Not them over there, not the people next door. Um, they are going to hate you. And frankly, this is something that we don't want. This is something that we don't desire. So we keep trying to repackage ways to respond um, and, you know, be winsome. Um, but we're losing. Yeah. And we are actually a part of speeding up the persecution that we're going to face in this country. Wow. And that's actually something that we need to lean into understanding. If we understand the history of Christianity, if we understand what the word of God says, this is to be expected. So if we are doing things, trying to be winsome or trying to like save our own selves, man, we have to understand that this is not the way of the Christian, that we are going to be countercultural. We're going to say things. We're going to do things that the world is not going to like. And because of that, we will be hated. And mm -hmm. I think that's something that we have to grow comfortable with. Not that it feels good. Not that we like, we're like, yeah, I want that. Right. But that's just the way it is. And so and until we really recognize that, man, I think we're going to continue to have problems. But, man, we have to lean into that. Yeah, the Christians are not masochists. Like, the Christians are right, not trying right. to, um, you know, say, hey, bring on the pain, bring on the persecution. Basically, the Christian is attempting to live faithfully. And mm -hmm. I think what we've got to understand is that Jesus promised us that in that faithful living and following him, that we were going to be persecuted. Remember that the warning that the disciples were going to face persecution and by extension, all of the followers of Christ was because of his name. Mm -hmm. Remember, it's not because like where you live, it's not because of like how you dress or any of those things. It's not because, you know, you're too harsh in your response when people have questions about what truth actually is. Remember, Jesus said that we are going to be persecuted because of his name. Look, when we are given instruction in scripture 
And when the Lord is asked the question about the end of the age and, and, and what we're going to be like the signs of his coming again. Right. And then the Lord talks about what it's going to be like in the last days and also what the disciples were going to face and how he was sending them out in Matthew chapter 10. I'm going to start at verse 16. And just think about this. Think about where we are today. Matthew chapter 10, verse 16. Behold, I send you out as sheep in the midst of wolves. So be shrewd as serpents and innocent as doves. But beware of men, for they will hand you over to courts and scourge you in their synagogues. And you will even be brought before governors and kings for my sake. Hmm. For my sake. This is the reason, right? For my right. sake. OK, as a testimony to them and to the Gentiles. But when they hand you over, do not worry about how or what you are to say, for it will be given to you in that hour what you are to say. For it is not you who speak, but it is the spirit of your father who speaks in you. Verse 21, brother will betray brother to death and a father his child and children will rise up against parents mm. and cause them to be put to death. You wow. will be hated by all because of my name, but it is the one who has endured to the end who will be saved. Mm. Listen, this is not about a sprint. This is not about us starting off and, you know, all oh, look at how much she loves Jesus. This, this is about enduring to the end. Yeah. And my concern is that so many of us have, um, we, we have fallen in love with a very soft Christianity. We've fallen in love with a faith that does not require anything of us. We are asked the question, are you willing to die for Christ? And it is just sort of like a rallying cry. I think, you know what I mean? It's not something that we have really attached a reality to that we have to be willing we have to be ready mm -hmm. to suffer for the name of Jesus Christ up until we're ready to do that, until we're willing to do that, then we're going to continue to take L's, that's losses, mm. even as we think we're making gains. Right. Um, and what prompted this conversation is I was looking at an article um, about a coach in Vermont who um, refused to allow, and this is a Christian school in Vermont, and they refused to allow their female basketball team to play against another female basketball team that was allowing a male to play on the hmm. team. Please notice that I am not saying that this other team, this opposing team, was allowing a biological male to play on the team. Now, why am I not saying that? I'm not saying that because when I have to say a biological male, <laughs> it gives the impression that there is a different type of male. Mm. <laughs> right. There's only male and female. That's right. So when we, so this is how we lose in culture, right? When we submit to their terms, even using, even saying biological male, like putting some sort of descriptor on men, that's saying that there is a certain type of man or we need to create a distinction. There is just male and there is just female. And so we've got to stop playing that game. OK, so I just wanted to point that out. But here is the story. This is from um, this is from the New York Post. You've got the coach of a Vermont high school girls basketball team that was banned from the state athletics after forfeiting a game against a team with a so-called trans player. Um, and this basketball coach actually defended his decision. He was like, listen, I know what it's like to coach girls. I also know what it's like to coach boys. Boys play different. They play different from girls. They're rougher. They're tougher. It is, it is dangerous for us to put girls out on a basketball court and have them play right. against a boy. Right. No, definitely. And I applaud this school and this coach for being uh, wise and, and having sense. You know, the thing is that that's protection for the girls that are on his team. And so he should do that. They should do that. You know, and it's crazy that we even have this conversation. I, I often think of my grandparents, if they heard us uh, sitting around talking about these things that we're talking about because it's so outrageous. Mm -hmm. And so for this coach and this school to say, no, we're not participating, man, kudos to them. Yeah. There's just no way that you can get around how much we have declined in our culture. And even to think that us having this kind of conversation, you know, is hateful or that it's mean spirited to actually just say the truth, to just, to just agree with God that there is male and there is female. And when you have a boy running up and down a basketball court playing against girls, there is something wrong with that. That is not just a different type of girl. That is a male. That is, right. that's a boy full stop, like with no disclaimer, right? So this basketball coach, Coach Goodwin, was recently on Fox News. Uh, this was earlier in the week. And I think it's so important, not only 
to hear from him and to hear his convictions, but also to see some of the basketball footage that is being played in the background. So if you listen to the podcast, I would like to recommend that maybe you try to check out the YouTube channel because there is a video here that is so important to see as you watch the video that's playing behind the coach as he's talking, man, you can see this young man just rough housing and rough handling these girls on a basketball court. Uh -huh. It to me is so abusive that it's a non-question. <laughs> it is not even something that we should be discussing, but let's right. take a look. Here is coach Goodwin um, talking about his team and talking about his school's decision to not put the girls on his basketball team in danger by having them play against a boy. Action is, you know, in the middle of the season last year, we were informed by, uh, other coaches and other players in the league that there was a, a male athlete playing for another team in our division. Now, they, this other team was not on our schedule during the year, uh, but we did see that there was a possibility that we might end up playing them in the playoffs and being seated against them. And as the season did come to an end, that is uh, that was the, the scenario that worked itself out. So after discussions with the administration and our players and parents, we decided that instead of going against our religious beliefs that you know, there are differences between male and female, and we are created differently. We decided to forfeit that game and uh, withdraw from the tournament. And at that point, the state of Vermont governing body kicked us out of all athletic competitions in the state. Mr. Tucker, we're, we're showing this footage right here. Uh, look at the elbows being thrown on. The, is, is there any legal ramifications? Because we have a biological male that that is hurting other female athletes. It's, it's only going to end one way here. Now, what I go ahead, go ahead, jump right in here because no. and we wanted to, to put the full screen <laughs> yeah. of the video so that you could actually see this young man just throwing his body weight around against these right. girls, the right. girls collapsing to the floor. Right. OK, go ahead. No, I was thoughts. just going to say, even when they're talking about it, you know, it's in a point of outrage, but they're still using these terms. Mm -hmm. You know, he's saying biological male. Then he said that he's throwing around uh, other girls. Yeah. Like other like he, that's a as boy if, as if he's a type of girl right and he's injuring other girls one of his same kind right, right. you and see so the yeah. conversation in itself is confusing and it's wrong you know he can't like it's so confusing to even talk about it because you got to make your mind think the way that it's supposed to think like when you're talking about these issues because it can the the, the terms and all that kind of stuff can get crazy but man that, that just shows you how uh, it has sucked us in, mm -hmm. you know, how it sucked us in. Yeah. So the coach was talking about the fact that he's got four daughters and he says, uh, and I'm reading from the New York Post article here, I've got four daughters. I've coached all of them at one point in their careers playing high school basketball. And he goes on to say, I've also filled in for boys and coached them when their coaches couldn't make the practice. And he says, I've run those practices and boys just play at a different speed, at a different force than the girls play it's mm -hmm. a different game he said and he's he goes on to say that engaging in this kind of activity where you've got boys playing against girls is irresponsible and it's asking for injury to a smaller female athlete the question is when are we going to start when are we going to start being brave and telling the truth just like what this coach is doing when are we going to do it? What I would like to see, and I'd like to get your take on this, yeah. really great, but what I would like to see is I would like to see the brave parents who begin instructing their daughters to do what this coach has done, because right. you don't have a lot of coaches who are willing to do this, right? But what you need is you need parents who teach their daughters, hey, you're just not playing. Yeah. Don't don't put yourself in danger. Don't put yourself in harm's way by playing against a boy. And also, and here's the other thing, spiritually speaking, you are validating a lie. When you allow for your daughter to enter into a tournament or enter into a sport where she is supposed to be competing against those who are like her and you've got a team where they are not like her, mm -hmm. okay, but but presenting as if they are like her, mm -hmm. then you are telling her to validate that as a lie. I would like to see parents stand up and start to say, no, you're not doing it. You're right. not participating in that. BJU Press Homeschool is the premier sponsor of the Culture Proof Podcast. Did you know that homeschoolers are a threat to a secular culture? It's true. For a society that envisions public education as the means by which it will indoctrinate future generations, destroy the proliferation of the gospel, and disintegrate the republic, 
homeschoolers are de facto revolutionaries. But all homeschooling is not created equal. What makes your kids education Christian is not the fact that you are one. This is why we trust BJU Press Homeschool to help us seamlessly disciple our children, even in their core subjects. We don't want a secular education that uses Bible verses as frosting. We want the knowledge of God preserved at every phase of what our kids are taught. Consider BJU Press Homeschool for all of your homeschooling needs. We trust them to back us as we grow the resistance. You can too. Visit BJUPress.com today. That's BJUPress.com. Yeah, I agree. I, I agree. Parents need to um, just take that role and say, hey, you know, we don't want our daughters to play if they are going to have this type of stuff going on. I think sometimes we're, you know, we, we love sports and we love those things too much where you, you, I don't know how many parents will really take that stand, but I think if they started doing that, then that would have an effect on these leagues and on these school leagues, you know, and it would be kind of like, okay, maybe we need to do something because when parents begin to, to speak out and to say, hey, my daughter is not playing, and that happens a, across the board, mm -hmm. you know, if, 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 a good, if a good amount of girls uh, do that, then you're not going to have any games. You're not going to have enough players. So I think that's the way that you begin to, to to hurt that type of thing from happening. And you begin to get them to recognize, man, I'm, maybe I'm doing something wrong or we need to change something. Mm -hmm. You know, I think it's important also to discuss the way that the school actually approached this. Uh, so you've got the school is mid Vermont Christian school and the school said, listen, you know, male and female are created differently. They're designed differently. And they were aware that there was a male playing against other females. And they figured, well, you know, as long as we have not entered into a situation where we've got to put our girls in danger, you know, we're just going to, we're going to keep going. Mm. And then it finally kind of came to a head that they found themselves um, having to come up against this boy. And they <laughs> said, we're not doing it. One of the things that they said is that it violates their conscience. Like it is, asking them basically to agree with a lie, like to say that their their girls are playing against all girls. And they're mm -hmm. like, no, we're not going to do it. I really feel like in that conviction, with the conviction of conscience, and we still to some extent respect that in this country, I feel like that's going to be the way that parents need to continue pressing in and that schools need to continue pressing in. Now, one of the things that I found interesting was that in Vermont, mm -hmm. They kind of kicked them out of the tournament and said that they were not going to be able to play at all, saying that this school was free to have its convictions, but they couldn't force those convictions on the other players and on the other schools that they would be playing against. Hmm. And so I thought, because these girls, because this coach said we're not participating like they, they just mm -hmm. kicked them out of the tournament in general. That's right. They banned Mid Vermont from all athletic wow. events as go. a result of the team's refusal to face this so-called trans player. There you go. Um now the school has filed a lawsuit and they're being re uh, represented by Alliance Defending Freedom. <laughs> yeah. uh, and uh, and that's good and and ADF actually feels like they have a case that they could win. Yeah. Um but but here's the thing though. <laughs> There's a level of hypocrisy that is present in that. So you are saying to the school that you are free to have your convictions, but you can't force your convictions on other schools by simply refusing to play against a boy. But aren't you then forcing your convictions and your view on other schools by inserting a boy into a girl's athletic sport mm -hmm. and then saying, see him as a girl because wow. he says he's a girl. Yeah. So isn't this forcing some ideological conviction on the other schools that acquiesce? And I think the problem is there are too, just too many schools that acquiesce. There yeah. are too many schools who say, okay, let's do it. Let's just play. Yeah, and they don't really have to even matter to them that they're being hypocrites because, look, man, those Christians are haters. They're being they're being hateful. And so we, we're going to do what we feel like we need to do, you know, take them out of the tournament completely, mm -hmm. you know, because they don't want to do it. And and, and they'll cloak, cloak it in, oh, no, but you can have your own thoughts and what you believe, but then they're going to drop the hammer down on it because they can just because they can. I think that's showing us that the world would not love us. Yeah, it's absolutely true. I, you know, one of the, there's another story that is uh, making headlines that I kind of wanted to just briefly kind of connect with this story because I feel like these are the things that um, really speed up the persecution of Christians in 21st century America. I feel like these are the kinds of things that make us a target. These are the things that will make us hated by all men. Um, this is a story out of Oklahoma where you've got a, a student who was identifying herself as non-binary. The student's name was Next Benedict, 
And um, this student died a day after she was involved in a physical altercation at school. What I find really interesting about this is that there's camera footage of her in the hospital. I think when she, I think she went to like an emergency room visit or something and you see her talking with a police officer and learning the details of what happened at school. She says that um, they were being bullied. She and another group or some other people were being bullied by some girls on campus. And she says that she poured water on the other students. And the late later, the students then found her in a bathroom and they beat her up. Mm -hmm. uh, again, all of this is condemnable. Like all of this, like there's there's no there is no way that you can look at that and say, hey, that's OK. Mm -hmm. All of it is wrong. The thing that I find interesting is that there is body camera footage of the officer with um, this student and her mom in a hospital room setting where he is telling the student, if you guys would like to file charges, we can do that. Um, but just know that you poured water. And so you started this. That's that's considered a type of offense. Mm -hmm. Right. So and she admits that she did that. Yeah. The issue is this is being turned into a trans student attack or an mm -hmm. LGBTQ plus student attack right. because she identified herself as non-binary. Even the officer kind of coming under attack uh, as his body cam footage has come out with people saying that that was not his place to say that. Hmm. Not to inform her that, you know, you can you can do this, but you started it like, why not? Because, <laughs> because there's a certain amount of protection that is afforded people who are in this particular Man, class, if you on. will. This is this is a part of the protected class. But the reason I think this story is so fascinating is because earlier this week, um, students from the school where Next Benedict was enrolled staged a walkout. Um, Owasso High School in Oklahoma, um, these students staged a walkout saying that the LGBTQ plus community has been victimized and mm -hmm. they saw this student as having been victimized rather than this being um, an altercation. Here's the other thing. Here's the other thing that's important. Um, the the LGBTQ plus advocacy group uh, GLSEN mm. sent out a mailer uh, saying that Next Benedict went home bloodied and bruised and then died as a result of being beaten up by these students in school. When you look at the video footage of her in the emergency room, she's not bloodied and bruised. She is coherent. She is lucid. She is talking about what she did that portended um, this attack that, yes, she was being bullied. There was no excuse for that. She poured water on them. That does not justify being beaten up or being jumped by a group of girls. All of that is wrong. But the thing that I find very intriguing about this story is that you've got the entire LGBTQ plus community now saying that Next Benedict was a victim because of how she identified, number one. And number two, she was not responsible for what happened at all. Number two, number three, number three, they are saying that she died as a result of those injuries when actually you have medical information out saying that she didn't die as a result of any of those in injuries, as a result of the fight that broke out in her school. Now, they have yet to release why she died, mm. what caused her death, but it's not because of the fight that she was in. Yet, here is what Glisten mailed out to its mailing list, okay? Um, and I just want to read a little bit of this. Activists are mourning the death of Oklahoma student Next Benedict, a non-binary Owasso High School student who was brutally beaten by other students earlier this month and died the following day. Instead of supporting Next, the school, or I'm sorry, not Next, it's Nex, N-E-X, the school sent them home, and they're using plural pronouns because... Zoom. This student mm. referred to herself as non-binary and then therefore using pronouns <laughs> they and them. Okay, so the school sent next Benedict home bloodied and bruised without notifying police or seeking urgent medical attention, which led to the student's death the following day. That's a flat out lie. But it doesn't matter in the time that we live in because you've got groups like Glisten and other groups and you've got celebrities who will stand up and make Next Benedict some type of superhero, right, that needs to um, be celebrated or held up as a rallying cry because of her identity, because of how she identified. 
No one's going to do any additional research. No one's going to ask the question, well, is that true? Is that what really happened? Like, did a mob of students really kill this student um, because of how she identified? Well, we've got camera footage that shows she was not near death when she was in the in the emergency room with her mom who said that they wanted to press charges on the other students. Look, and I have no problem with them saying we want to press charges on these right, students right. who who beat up our daughter. But she also says, yeah, I, I, I did pour water on them as a result of them mocking us because of how we were dressing. Mm. Okay. And again, can I, can I say this? Man, and I, I want to be careful here <laughs> because I know we're talking about a person's life. Right. And that life has value and worth. And that person has dignity because that person is made in the image of God. That is so important to say. But can I say that when I was in high school, middle school, um, I was made fun of from time to time for what I wore. Mm. It had nothing to do with me being a part of a protected class. It had everything to do with the fact that kids are cruel. <laughs> that right. kids are immature. Right. That they do and say things that point to the fact that they need training and discipline from their parents at home. Yeah. Like, but that's not what you're going to find here. What you're going to find is that stories like this, right? Number one, they speed up the persecution against Christians. Somehow, you know, it's going to be <laughs> if right. the Tiber overflows or the Tiber floods, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's going to be the Christians to the, to the beast. And, and this is the same type of thing. And, and also what you see, um, as a result of this is that, man, there's so much hateful legislation out there. So now you're going to have legislators kind of taking a step back and saying, okay, wait a minute, we don't want to further victimize these students, but let's look at the reality here. Let's look at the fact. What we are talking about is we're talking about a very unfortunate altercation. No one deserves to be beaten the way that next Benedict was beaten. No one deserves that. No one deserves to be, to be made fun of or to be mocked in any way. But can we also acknowledge that teenagers are cruel and they do stupid things? You understand what I'm yeah, saying? And definitely. then also, let's tell the truth. She did not die because she was jumped in a school bathroom. That is not what happened. But again, because those facts yeah. are not necessary, right. what begins to, to be the rallying cry is, you know, woe is this group. Yeah. Woe is this group of people. And who's to blame for this? These people with these antiquated ideas. It's the Christians who adhere to God's word. It's going to be the legislators who are, have the nerve or the audacity to say that um, boys are boys and girls are girls and that they can't share bathrooms. Right. Right. These things serve as opportunities for groups like this. Yes. You know, they seize upon these moments, even if uh, they, they don't share the truth or the facts of what happened, the optics of it, they, they create a narrative of something that they would use for their advantage. And so when you have this protected group and this happens, even if uh, the reason for the death is not because of the, the jumping, you know, it's like, but no, it is. But right after, you know, the next day, she dies. So they, they, they're going to make that connection for you mm -hmm. and they're going to put it out and they're going to blast it. You know, it's another opportunity for to uh, people to be victimized, yeah. you know, to say this, these are the victims and you people who serve uh, this God and, and you people who have these certain set of uh, beliefs and, and you guys are the terrorists. Mm -hmm. That's exactly the game plan. That's what they desire to do. And it, it happens when you have situations like this. Yeah. It's really sad because I think that, you know, rather than a sincere um, caring for this girl um, who again, you know, died. And, and I think we are, we have yet to learn exactly what her cause of death was. Uh, I think it's unfortunate mm. that there will not be a sincere mourning of her death as much as there will be a rush to capitalize on the type of statement that you can make with it. Yeah. Now, you know, if you have any other group of people doing something like that, um, they would be called opportunists. Right. And so I think that the people who jump on this to try to say, hey, look at what's happening. You this is this is what's going on with trans identified kids, or this is what's going on with non-binary kids, and 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 just willfully ignoring the details of the story just so that you can make a different story, a story that fits your narrative. Um, that's opportunistic. Mm -hmm. That's not loving or respectful of the person who is dead. Right. That's not loving or respectful. Telling the truth is loving and respectful. And you know what I, I think is interesting because in the video footage that I saw, um, the, the officer body cam footage where, he, where next Benedict is being interviewed. What I think is interesting is that she actually did tell the truth. 
She actually did tell what she did. And, and, and by the way, I think it is so important to continue saying none of that pouring water on someone does not demand or command the type of response where these girls jumped her. And that's something, man, they're going to need counseling for that. They're going to need counseling for that. But we need the truth all the way around. Like, yeah. don't say that those girls killed this student because she was non-binary. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, that's that's language that incites. That's language that creates hostility. Right. And, you know, people taking their sides with a destructive end in mind. Yeah, definitely. And that's what our culture uh, seizes upon today. You know, never uh, let a crisis go mm. to waste. You know, you can capitalize wow. on these type of things and make it to your advantage to push your narrative. That's exactly uh, what's being done today. You know, and just again, um, I'm looking at a story here from The Independent. An Owasso police spokesperson said that an autopsy indicated that next death was not a result of physical trauma, but still they have not released a full report. And so you're waiting for that to come out. You're waiting for toxicology tests. You're waiting to get this information. But again, in the meantime, while we're waiting to get this information, you've got organizations like Glisten just running crazy saying that she was brutalized and beaten to death. And that just isn't true. Mm. These are lies. Um, there are a lot of people who are not going to bother to do the research. Uh, and all the while create the kind of stir in our country, the kind of stir in our society that continues to put people at odds, mm -hmm. to paint a picture, to paint a narrative that fits their end, mm -hmm. which is the destruction of all the, you know, biological distinctions <laughs> that the Lord God has given us. So yeah. anyway, it saddens me. And one of the things I would say, um, again, you will be hated by all men for the name of Jesus Christ. Like when we see these things happening, it should not surprise us. We should understand very clearly that Jesus told us these things would happen. Why are we going to be hated? It's not going to be because we don't dress a certain way. It's not going to be because we don't eat certain foods. It's going to be because we say that there is one Lord. His name is Jesus. And we refuse to worship at the altar of any other, including culture, mm -hmm. including what is culturally normative. So we got to resist. When we resist those cultural trends that rival the truth, we remain culture free. Until next time, Lord willing. God bless.